Yep, we're on. Welcome, church. Morning, morning, morning. How are we all this morning? Good? For those of us who get here before 9.30, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's great to be back in church. Um, my name's Paul. I'm on the team here and with my daughter, Emily, and my other daughter, Mackenzie, a bit later on, we're going to lead you in some worship. So, would we all like to stand up? Your holy name. I 
who you are. That is 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 who you come to a time of communion. These pieces of paper. Yeah, maybe just open up your communion, make a noisy part over now. Um theme of communion this morning is, is unity. Um, it's, good to be gather, it's good to be back together here um, as, as one service. Uh, we've had enough of sitting in our homes and being separated by time and space from our church, our, our people we love, our families, our friends. Um, and communion is the one thing that brings us all together as Christians. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter who, what church we go to. Um, there's only one church. And the one thing that unifies us is communion. The Bible reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians 1. And this was taken at a time when there was dispute and separation in the church. And Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. I, Paul, call to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and our brothers Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. And though we come together, this, this unity is, is, is changing and evolving. Um, I'd just like to remind us that we're still not completely um, unified. There's we have this service now and this service at four o'clock this afternoon and and we we mourn at various levels and we all have our different views on it, but that's just the way that it is at the moment. But I just pray that we all realize that we are one church, that um, the brothers and sisters that sit here now, we are, as, they are, are one with the brothers and sisters that come this afternoon. Um, and we must think of them and, as they should think of us. And... Um, consider each other um, and try and avoid as far as we possibly can the, the disunity and separation that comes our way. So I'd just like to have a prayer in this, in this regard. If we close our eyes. Dear God, we need you. Some days we feel so broken and uncertain. We're hurting, we're struggling, and we're aware more than ever of our own weaknesses and of the dark forces that constantly surround us, fighting to gain ground in our lives and families. We choose to stand our grand ground today and say no more. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. We ask that you would help us to truly live a life of love. We ask that you surround this country and cover us with your mighty hand. We pray for unity in our land, that in spite of our differences, we would be willing to stand strong together and live out our days with compassion and grace. Remind us to live lives aware of what is happening around us, to use our time wisely, to listen to your voice and be willing to make a difference in this land. Give us the vision to live our lives as you would have us live. Amen. 
Now, if we take our symbols, the tradition in this church is that we'll we'll take the bread together, and um, then we will um, we we take the bread in our own time, and then we we drink the cup together. So I'll pray, and then you and we'll have about a minute silence so that we can just think of our own weeks, our own. Um, lives, <clears throat> and then I'll pray for the, the cup of laden. So this is the prayer for the bread. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Let's take the bread. Pray for the cup. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Okay, so we're going to play a, a song now that's probably a new song for a lot of you, and maybe not for some of you. The lyrics shouldn't be. Um, this is a song that's been on my heart since we started this, the new series that's been started now on the Lord's Prayer. This song is based off the Lord's Prayer. It's a song called Our Father. So we're going to play it. If you know it, feel free to sing. Feel free. It's pretty easy to pick up and sing as well. Um, if you just want to sit and listen, that is also good. But, uh... If you feel like you want to stand and sing, you can do that as well. But you don't have to, no pressure. Mackenzie, you can't stand and sing. Sorry. <laughs>
Thanks a lot, guys. Um, this is Paul, Emily and Mackenzie, for those who don't know. And thanks, Brian, for introducing uh, communion as well. Welcome. It's, it's great to have you all here today. And many faces I haven't seen, mainly because you had masks on. But anyway. <laughs> but no, there is a few people here that I haven't seen for some time. And it is great to be able to be back. And as, as Brian alluded to, this is just another step <coughs> uh, towards us all being together again and uh, and I'd really, really encourage you to keep praying towards that end. Uh, it'll be great for us to, as a, a nation, to be able to uh, freely come together <coughs> as a family and uh, and continue to worship our God. So it is great to be here though uh, today. Um, I've got a couple of announcements. Oh, the other thing too, it's just to remind us, you know, the reasons that we do come together is to have fellowship, uh, to encourage one another. But also we come together, as uh, Paul and as just saying, and Emily, this song uh, and this current series that we're doing on the Lord's Prayer, we come to worship our Father. And we come to, uh, to acknowledge you know, that He is in heaven and that His will be done and that His name be kept holy. Um, we also come too to remember Jesus and um, often I reflect back on uh, Jesus' words. Some of his last words were uh, that you should go and preach uh, repentance in my name, actually. And repentance is a sense of knowing that we've discovered something new and because of that we start to live a life differently and we live it differently because Jesus comes into our life and turns us back to the Father. It's an amazing thing. And so we come to do these things as a family. Just to um, uh, emphasise again, our services <coughs> currently now will be just 9.30 on a Sunday and 4pm. So 9.30, uh, that's for uh, those who have a, um, are declaring their vaccination status. And one of the things that did change and caught us a little bit off guard this time round is that uh, the age in which you have to declare that has dropped down to 12 now, 12 and up. So anyone who's coming needs to be able to show uh, from that age up that they are vaccinated. And in the 4pm service, um, it's uh, non-declared. Um, and our quota there in terms of people that can come is more, which is great. <coughs> um, the uh, other thing too uh, is that we're continuing with our services online. So for those who are watching this morning online, uh, it's great to have you uh, join us. One of the things that I do, it's just a little thing that I'm interested in, I like to look at how many people are coming here each week. And one of the things I've noticed, and, I, and then on Monday morning I look at how many people are looked at the views, and it actually is connected. When we can't have people here... It sits at about 250 people watch the views, but when we have about 100 people here, it drops down by 100 or so. It's really interesting. It's very connected. But it's really great that our family are making that effort to stay connected as best they can. Uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, would like to do leading up to Christmas is uh, support a pro program or project that uh, Bob or Food Relief uh, are running this year. And, uh, it's, and we're calling it the Christmas, Christmas Food Collection. But uh, as you know, Bobo Food Relief um, do an amazing job in our community. And what they do each Christmas, uh, or have for the last few years, is uh, put together hampers for people who are in need. And as you can appreciate, their, that need is great at this point in time. And so uh, what we'd like to do is, as a family, is collect food items uh, and then we'll give them, uh, hand them over to Bobo Food and Relief on the 16th of December and then they'll distribute them for Christmas. And the whole idea of it is that this is going to be food that people can use for Christmas. Um, so there's a list of items up there, there's some posters out in the foyer, we've also sent it out in the email. So um, we're going to be setting up some uh, uh, things in the foyer for you to be able to drop those food and food items off. So let's really get behind it. Let's uh, be Jesus to these people. Let's be light to the people in the community uh, by supporting this program. The other thing, uh, yesterday uh, we had a um, helped out uh, Roma Misson, who's one of our uh, members of our congregation here, um, and uh, this is something we'd like to be able to do more: is establish a helps program. Uh, yesterday, there was quite a number of people turned up during the day to help uh, 
do some work on Roma's garden, uh, which is quite extensive. And uh, here's a picture of some of the people who were there. And we just want to say thank you for those who were able to come and help. It was just fantastic. I timed it perfectly. I turned up at 10 o'clock when there was cream and jam scones and a cup of tea. And then appropriate left when I'd finished those. But anyway, no. <laughs> no, but it was just wonderful. One of the things I wished I had my camera ready, we actually, just before we took this shot, we said, oh, can we get Roma out and we'll take a picture? As she walked around the corner, her mouth just dropped open as she looked at her garden. I couldn't work out was whether it was, uh, oh, my goodness, that's wonderful. Oh, oh my goodness, what did you do to my garden? <laughs> but anyway, I think she was generally happy. And thanks for those who were able to help out. Please continue to pray for the Generations Pastor and the admin position. Uh, we are interviewing for the Generations Pastor position at this time and we would really like uh, that to uh, be able to appoint someone before the end of the year, but we really want to know that uh, uh, God's appointment in this. So please, we're depending on you to be praying uh, for this at this time. Um, and just fin finally... Um, Tools Down is finally uh, able to be able to uh, run again. And so Monday week, they've got an event on. Um, so if you want uh, details of those, uh, just see me or uh, it's in E! News or speak to Andrew Pike or Pete Wells, other guys who actually support that program. So they've got a, a big event plan, planned for Monday week. And um, after the service, we will be having our tea and coffee over there and also the uh, coffee in the CAF as well after the service. And we don't need to race off because there's no service afterwards. So take the opportunity to catch up with each other. Before I ask, uh, I'm going to ask, ask Liz actually, to, Fennec, I think she's here somewhere, to come up and pray for us. If I think it, yeah, there she is. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can all be together again. Thank you that you have protected us over this time. We just thank you for, um, as we've been learning about the Lord's Prayer, you've said, give us each day our daily bread. Father, you have provided our needs for us. And Lord, we just include our health in this as well, that you have provided over these two years. You've kept us safe, that we can come back again together as one group, even though we are divided through at home and through here. Father, we thank you for all your goodness to us. We thank you for those who um, have done the research, who are providing care for those who are unwell. We thank you that we live in a country where we can have free access to health care. Father, you've blessed us in so many ways, and we thank you for that. And Father, as we think of our daily bread and your provision for us, we do just pray that um, we might be really careful to see those who don't have as much as we have. Father, you've blessed us in so many ways, but we pray that you would bless our hearts and help us to be open in sharing with other people. Father, there are so many ways in which we can help, and we just pray in this next week that you would help us to see others in need and help us to be generous with our words, with our love, with our support, and with our money. Father, we just pray for... Uh, Danny, as he is uh, with a, another couple getting married, we just pray for that marriage, that you would draw them, first of all, to yourself, and then that you would draw them to, to each other, that you would help their love to increase and that their life might be able to be a testament to your glory. Father, we just pray for Pete as he gives us the message that each of us might be challenged and in this next week that we can show forth your love to those around us. We just thank you for all your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, we are awake. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, you know, after working for 11 plus years for one organisation, I have recently changed job. And that's caused me to um, spend quite a bit of time reflecting on God's provision and reflecting on what I need. And when Danny asked me a short time ago if I would step in and bring this message this morning because he's away in Orbost and it was a bit far to come back, it kind of seemed like when he told me that the message is give us this day our daily bread, that it was kind of fit and right for me to come up and speak to you this morning in relation to this topic. Now, Judy and my early experience was that we studied and lived and then worked and lived in a faith organisation. And rightly or wrongly, in this organisation, you didn't ask for money. And you also didn't let anybody know if you were in need. And when we were working in the organisation, I guess the important context there is that nobody who worked in the organisation was on a salary or a stipend. There was no shared pool of funds. So we really were very dependent upon the provision of God for all of our needs. And I suppose it was very formulative years for Judy and I because pretty much we got married, we um, finished our studies and then we worked in the same organisation for a few years. And in a sense we did a lot of our growing up in this context of being dependent upon God in a very real way for provision. And we saw some amazing things and heard some amazing stories and in a sense were a part of that, of people getting a knock on their door and going out and finding a box of groceries. And it was very much in the days where you actually did get a cheque in the mail and people would open their mail and they would find a cheque from somebody that they weren't expecting or even somebody they didn't know. And there was funds in there that were sufficient to pay car registration or school fees or to fix a car and uh, certainly one of our experiences was when we actually had funds to buy a a new car well a second hand car had air conditioning it was great Um, we used it for about 14 years it was a wonderful provision and uh, and we even um, during the the time that we were there in context of give us this day our daily bread, we even had a bread run where one of the major uh, bakery suppliers in Sydney um, enabled us to come in and get um, unsold, uh, uh, undistributed bread and uh, we would bring that back to our community there and and, uh, share that around and sometimes there was even iced buns which were really good. But there's one story that really stands out to me from that time and it's a story of when bread became peanut butter and the chair of the organisation at the time recounted this story because it was his family's personal story because God's provision isn't always when we want it and it's not always what we want or what we expect and and his story was where all that they had to eat for several days was rice and peanut butter and in telling the story, he, he shared how they would hand out spoons of peanut butter in the family and that was their meal. Until after several days of this, somebody who'd noticed that they hadn't gone out, which is kind of one of the advantages of living in a community. There's plenty of disadvantages too because people notice everything. Um, but somebody noticed that they hadn't gone out, that they hadn't been shopping and came and brought them a box of groceries, not actually knowing the need that they were in and that they'd been eating peanut butter for a few days. And to bring that home to us, that, that um, person and his wife 
were career missionaries. It didn't deter them. It didn't weaken their resolve or their faith. And their two children also became missionaries. And in fact, their daughter Debbie spoke here just a few short months ago with her husband Paul. In this part of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, it forms a turning point for us. A turning point where in that beautiful song that we just sang, we turn from our thoughts that are directed and centred on God to the rest of the prayer is petitions or requests that are very much a part of our daily lives. And there's three things that I want you to remember today. Now, normally a speaker holds these three things and gives you them one at a time and you get to the end of the message because you then don't know when it's actually coming. But today I'm going to give you these three things because I want you to remember these three things. And they're very short and they're very simple. I'm going to talk about daily dependence, body and soul, and community. And if you can take those three things with you, to reflect on, to contemplate and to practice, then I think you'll be on a very good road. You know, bread is a fascinating study if you want to take the time to dip into it and do it. If you want to have a look at all of the references and the meanings and the symbolism of bread through the, through the scriptures, you will be engrossed, fascinated, and you'll chew up time far better than what you do on Facebook or any other social media platform. But believe it or not, the first reference of bread in the scriptures is in Genesis chapter 3. And it's where God is talking to Adam and Eve and outlining the consequences of their sin. And God says to Adam that through the sweat of your brow... You will eat bread. And that's the first reference you find. The second reference is a really fascinating and interesting one which we're not going to go into. But it's, a, but it's the story of where Abram, as he was then called before he became known as Abraham, met King Melchizedek. And King Melchizedek took bread and wine and blessed Abraham. And it's pretty easy to join the dots there, isn't it, as to what that was a symbol of and what that became. And there's a whole list of things that you can, you can see. I've put a couple up there. There's the Feast of Grains. So one of the feasts that the people of Israel undertook each year was the Feast of Grains, which involved bread. The, um, of course... Bread was provided for the children of Israel in their 40 years wandering through the wilderness. That's what manna effectively was. Some of that was put into the Ark of the Covenant as an ongoing and continual reminder. There's the great story of Elijah being fed bread by ravens. And then when the water in the creek ran out at that time, Elijah went into the town and, and there was a woman who had only a little bit of oil left. And who was going to starve. And Elijah said, pour that oil and make some bread with the flour you've got. And the supply continued and didn't run out. And then, of course, we turn into, into when Jesus was in his ministry and his temptation in the wilderness from Satan, where Satan tempted him and challenged him to turn the stones into bread. So there are reference after reference after reference through the scripture of bread. But the thing is that when Jesus in this prayer said, give us this day our daily bread, the people that heard that knew so much and had so much context around the meaning of bread. And their minds would have turned back to these stories and their minds would have turned back to the reference in Deuteronomy where it was said, you will not live by bread alone, but by the things of God. So when they heard this line in this prayer, 
there was immediate significance and meaning for them. You know, when it comes to, to daily dependence, you know, this prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. And this is where we get the context, I suppose, of starting every day with Jesus. Because there's not much good asking for your daily bread at the end of the day. And there's not much good asking for your daily bread halfway through the day. It's far better to ask for that bread and to start your day with that attitude. And I'm going to do a little bit of shameless promotion here for something that I've got no stake in at all. When I was a teenager and attending church, I constantly heard many of the adults in my church refer to their daily devotional called Our Daily Bread. Pretty easy to see today where it gets its name from, isn't it? But the adults in my church constantly said, you know, in my daily bread reading today, I was challenged by this. Or they would say, in my daily bread reading on Wednesday, there was, there was this story and there was this verse and it inspired me. So I, I went out and I responded and I did something. And those were stories that resonated with me and stuck with me and about three or so years ago, I realized I could get our daily bread on an app. And so now I start every morning with my bowl of porridge reading our daily bread. And if you want to whip out your tablet and your phone, I don't mind if you download it right now. <laughs> because you'll get more value out of it than you will for listening to me for 20 minutes. And it's not going to cost you anything. And it'll happen while you listen to me. So you can multitask. Now, of course, there are many different apps that you can get, and this is but one, and I know many of you would use this, and I know many of you would use others. There's another great little connection that we have in this church with our daily bread because one of the, uh, one of the people that grew up in this church and attended kids' church and teen church and youth programs now works for our daily bread in Melbourne. But the point in this is that to use something like our daily bread is forming a habit which this part of the prayer is saying we need to have. This daily dependence, this attitude to start your day off in this way. It points us to the fact that we should not be self-sufficient. It points us to the reality that we need to have an attitude of every day being refreshed and renewed and being in sync with Jesus. It's interesting that in this same passage in Matthew 6, if you read a little bit further, and I would encourage you in your life groups this week and in your families at home to read a little further in Matthew 6 and, and jump down to verses 25 to 34 and read through them because this theme of bread is continued and this theme of daily dependence is continued in this passage. And Jesus says in part in, the, in that passage, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Don't worry about these things, saying what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear. Seek the kingdom of God. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I love that. That's a great piece of advice, isn't it? You know, concentrate on today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But that's done in a context of seeking Jesus and in seeking Jesus to fulfill 
our needs. And Jesus, of course, said, as Brian reminded us earlier, that he is the bread of life, able to provide, able to sustain. You know, in the story I told earlier about being in that faith organisation and seeing God's provision for people, the interesting thing there and the thing to grasp a hold of is that provision wasn't just physical. That provision was spiritual as well. Because as people were providing for one another, as people were receiving provision, as people were seeing God provide in amazing ways for them, Yes, it met their physical needs, but it encouraged their soul. It strengthened their understanding and their confidence in God. And there is no doubt about it that when we read this phrase, when we hear this phrase, give us today our daily bread, it has a meaning which is both physical and a meaning which is both spiritual, which is why I've put the second point in of body and soul. Because daily we need both our physical and our spiritual needs to be met. Because there is no good if we are living our life and seeing God provide for us, but then as soon as something comes that takes us by surprise... Or as soon as something comes that we don't like, if we erupt, if we blow up, if we get angry, if we express frustration. Because in those reactions and responses, our spirit, our soul, has not been fed. Our walk with Jesus is not being displayed. Our response should be God-honouring. Our response to whatever is happening around us should be God-focused and God-pleasing. And we should not be letting our surroundings define who we are or our relationship with Jesus. And importantly, others should be able to see Jesus through us as we're sustained both in body and soul by the bread of life. And life throws plenty at us, doesn't it? You know, irrespective of the last two years and what that's thrown at us, life throws plenty at us. Times of great joy and times of immense sadness. We see things of beauty and we see things of desolation. Times of plenty and times of drought. Times of fullness, times of loneliness. And in all those times, our response and our focus should be to be seeking and asking Jesus to give us our daily bread. I mentioned earlier that I had started a a new job with a new organisation after 11 years working for my previous and that that's caused me to do some thinking and some soul searching in many respects. And one of the things about this new job is it's almost the opposite in many respects of what my previous experience had been. Because I'm earning way less money than what I was. But I'm knocking off when I should be knocking off. And when I knock off, there's actually a little switch going off. And I'm not thinking about all the problems that I have to come back to. I'm not thinking about all the reports I need to write. I'm not thinking about all the challenges and the politics and the stress and the never-ending churn and cycle that I was in. And as a result, I'm more available. I'm getting to the end of the day and because I'm knocking off when I should be knocking off, 
I can still do other things. And I still have energy at the end of the week. And, and on a Friday night, my wife can still talk to me because I'm not a vegetable. And it's caused me to think, how much is this worth? How much is it worth that I can knock off when I should knock off? That I'm not stressed? That I'm not thinking about all the problems I still need to solve and resolve? All the reports and the work I still need to do and the never-ending cycle of sorting things out. And so both in body and soul, it's causing me to ask this question, how much value do I put on that? How much value can you put on that? How much, in a sense, bread do I need? The other thing in this, or my third point, is this aspect of community. You see, there's something really interesting in the Lord's Prayer. We don't pray my Father in heaven, we pray our Father in heaven. We don't pray give me my daily bread. We pray give us our daily bread. And there is a real and huge and enormous sense of community in this prayer and in this part of this prayer and in the next part of this prayer, which we'll get to next week. There is a sense that being in community, we're here for everyone. We're here for each other. And that sense of community you've probably heard wrapped up in the first two points because it connects. Because as we receive nourishment from Jesus, we should be feeding those around us. We should be impacting each other. This isn't something we ask for ourselves. It's something we ask so that we can give. It's something we ask so we can be available. We often look to the early church in Acts 2 as an example. And it's a passage I think that will be very familiar to most. Where they devoted themselves to meeting together. Where they broke bread together daily and met each other's needs. I have always loved the story of Jesus meeting the two people on the road to Emmaus after he rose and walking with them along that road and explaining to them all of scripture. And then at the end of that journey, they asked him to stay with them rather than go. And it's recorded in scripture that Jesus broke bread and then they understood through that form of breaking bread who they had been with. And they were so excited that they ran back to Jerusalem through the middle of the night and they found the disciples to tell them that Jesus was alive. And what did they say? They say, he was known to us in the breaking of bread. I wonder this morning, who are you breaking bread with? Who are you breaking bread with? Who are you displaying that your heart, that your attitude is an attitude where you come to God daily and you ask, give us this day our daily bread? In community, we should be both willing to give and willing to receive. And both those aspects are wrapped up in this request, in this prayer. You know, as we come back together, will your attitude be to take Jesus on a daily basis as your nourishment, as your sustenance, 
so that you can break bread with others and pass on that message so that your actions, your reactions, your words demonstrate that you have a reliance on God to provide all you need. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this model prayer that you've given us. A prayer that points us to you and a prayer that points us to our needs. And a point that points us to how we can live our lives. Lord, we pray that we will be bread to those around us. We pray that we will receive your provision. We will receive your nourishment for our souls. And we pray that this will guide and direct our actions and our reactions. And we pray that we will grasp the understanding of a daily dependence on you to feed our body and our soul. And we pray that we will be community to each other in all of these things we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pete. That was awesome. There's a lot in there to digest. No. no, that was awesome. Great word. Thank you very much. Obviously, my joke, not as good. <coughs> Fantastic. We're going to sing one more song. If we'd all like to stand up. Just grab a hold of this experience of us us all being together. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance here by heavy stone, Messiah still and all. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God. Oh, praise his name forevermore, for in this days we will sing your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. And on the third, that break of Son of heaven rose again. Oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name of the Lord.
blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed Jesus he shall return Sing so shall be the night, and I will rise among the saints by gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. instruments. It's been wonderful. I, I trust to, uh, that this message has really impacted you. Um, it's a powerful prayer. And thanks, Pete, for reminding us of uh, the importance of uh, daily dependence on God. And one of the things that's on my heart, actually, as we are on this road that we're on at the moment, is how people are actually traveling and how many people will actually come back to fellowshipping and how their daily bread has actually been going actually so really ask you to pray as we um, move in the direction that we are that people uh, would really want to connect again with their family yeah so thanks Pete um, as I mentioned earlier we've uh, got tea and coffee over there and there's coffee in the calf uh, if there's something you'd like to pray about or chat about um, I'll be up the front and I'm sure Pete would be happy to as well um, and we'd love to uh, spend time with you. Um, if you're not, if you're watching online, please reach out to us or reach out to your life group leaders. Um, uh, they can uh, spend time with you as well in prayer. So thanks a lot, guys, and hope to see you next week. Thanks. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. See